up to all of my sweet little garbanzo beans. Um, hello and welcome to your south node in Aquarius reading. And this is for all my baby beans who have, as you can tell, south node in Aquarius. Um, so, you know, this is really supposed to be looking at like your past life energy reading. And this is the, the reason why is because your south node is one of a couple of major placements in your natal chart that can kind of talk about past life energy. And the reason why is that your south node is thought to be an energy you've already mastered and many people thus believe this is a life you've already lived because you've mastered this energy. Um, so in this lifetime, your south node is really, like I said, an energy you've already mastered. This can be something that you kind of like naturally default to, something that, you know, you're you're just like um it's just like it's second nature to you essentially whereas your north node is always going to be opposite the sign that your south node is in and the the purpose of this is to try to you know if you're asked being asked to detach from your south node energy and move toward your north node the goal of this is to try to bring in balance and harmony at the soul level oof excuse my burp i'm so sorry <laughs> it was a little burp but it was fierce um, so your, your north node is always going to be opposite your south node on the wheel of the zodiac. So if you have your south node in Aquarius, this would put your north node in Leo. Um, and so I want to also make a couple of really quick notations. One of which is that your, your, um, south node, like I said, is not the only indicator of past life energy in your chart. Um, the past life that this is referring to may not be your only past life, nor not even like, oof, excuse me, or even <laughs> like not your most prominent lifetime. Sorry, I stumbled over my words super bad. <laughs> um, this is just talking about the lifetime which is most impacting you in this lifetime. I also want to make, um, you know, kind of the, the notation as well that your, um, your south node is going to be heavily impacted by the house it's in as well as like any um any, excuse me any other placements in that house and then any other interplanetary aspects that are impacting your south node directly um so this is kind of a general reading for everybody who has their south node in aquarius but this may have specific tweaks or, or play out differently um in your chart just depending on those other very personalized factors um, and I had another point. What was it, you guys? Oh, that's what it was. If you're not 100% sure of what your south node is, um, I did include a link in the description box to a site where you can generate a full, or excuse me, a free natal chart report. I'm not like affiliated with nor sponsored by them. I just like it, so I figured I'd include it. Um, if you are interested in doing more of this deep dive into your chart, um, I also do offer in-depth natal chart readings. I will say they are quite lengthy. <laughs> they tend to run around four hours. Um, so they're a very long video reading for you uh, but we go over everything we cover house placements you know your planetary placements your interplanetary aspects and how major astrological transits of the year may impact you directly based on what's in your chart um, as well as there's a question or there's a, se a section where you can ask questions so for example if you watch this reading and you had further questions sorry there's fuzz right there um, and you had further questions um, you know you could always ask you know south node questions as well in addition to um going over the rest of your natal chart so and that's i guess my last my last little thing too if you guys like this and you'd like to see this added um like just this south node reading added as a reading in my shop um because i also have the link to my natal chart readings below and the natal the Oh my god, you guys, I can't talk. And the link to my shop in general listed below. If you like this reading and you'd like to see it added, please let me know um, either in the comments or you can DM me. I do custom readings, but if enough people request this, I will also add it to the shop. Um, so this is a community for all of us, and your input is valued and appreciated. With that being said, um, I think we are ready to get into it. Okay, so um, I pulled out of the Astro deck, and that's actually one more thing. All the decks I'm going to be using are going to be linked in the description box down below. So, just in case you're wondering. Um, I did use the Astro deck. I pulled out the Aquarius card to represent y'all with South Node in Aquarius. Um, and this card says, experimental, rational, unique, liberal, uh, electric, um, Interesting. I almost said eclectic, so that might that might be a, a pertinent word here as well. Uh, electric, group-oriented, humanitarian, free, 
radical, eccentric, diverse, futuristic, utopian, idiosyncratic, disruptive, edgy, and detached. And the key word here is the innovator. Um, so South Node and Aquarius can really talk about, I mean, all of these themes, but South Node and Aquarius can talk about struggling to be, um, like, you know, because Aquarius is kind of known for being a little bit detached, even though there's a very humanitarian energy here. Um, but South Node and Aquarius can kind of talk about struggling to see yourself as part of the group, um, or as like part of the collective, um, past a certain point, right? So this is like maintaining long-term involvement with with a group um this is this is also where you're ahead of your time and because this is in the south node um it, this is kind of to me talking about really really struggling to identify with the current culture or to find your kind of like your your niche your group of people your tribe um and when I was doing the pre-meditation for this reading, something I was really picking up on, and we'll see what comes out with the past life cards, but something I was really picking up on for this reading is that this past life energy that's coming through, um, I feel as if there's like a lot here about like, um, so what I was kind of picking up on is either like these sort of like futuristic viewpoints on something like communal living. Um, so this may have talked about living literally in a commune um, or living in like an alternative, an alternative kind of situation. Um, so this like kind of talks about sorry I thought my camera stopped for a second so I was peeking um this can kind of talk about that and something else I was picking up on again is this almost like artistic kind of thing which I know is not um is not always associated with Aquarius like Aquarian energy but something I was picking up on is this like this past life energy around um around particularly around the arts and what I feel like this was talking about is a period in your lives where there is a pivotal shift in the arts right so this may have been like um you know being kind of at the forefront of a new like of a, a new wave in the art world a new style of art like really like um questioning and challenging what makes true art and what like questioning and challenging voices of authority within the art world and again i know that's not usually associated with aquarian energy but that's kind of what i was picking up um especially with the orange flower here there feels like there's a lot here about creation um and so these were kind of like the the vibes i was picking up while i was um while i was like channeling and meditating prior to the reading um, and this would actually make sense too, because again, this will put your North node in Leo, um, which can really point to this, this need to, um, kind of like, like spearhead a movement or be like, you know, Leo is all about leadership energy. Leo also rules the fifth house. So this is a lot about your, you know, your joy, your passions, your creativity. Um, and so again, I was picking up this energy of like having these really unique ideas, really like like thinking outside the box, challenging what we know to be true, and again, particularly in like a creative or artistic context, but I feel as if there was this detachment that in this past life may have led you to not pursue it further, or um, it, it just felt like it didn't fully like blossom or come to fruition, and that might be why your North Node is in Leo in this lifetime to help spur you on to kind of take up more of a leadership role. This also could have been the situation where it was like you and a small group of people, whether this is like um, an art collective or again, you know, like a, like a commune or like communal living kind of situation, where it feels like it was there and there was a small group of people who were very invested, but maybe nobody took up a leadership position at all. And as a result, um, things may have kind of started to fizzle and fall apart. And so this is having your North Node now in Leo is really encouraging you to be open to the possibility of seeing your own leadership potential because you have the ideas, right? You have that, like that beautiful eccentricity. Um, you know, again, I thought I saw the word eclectic at one point. So you might be really good at pulling from like different disciplines, different styles. Oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. <laughs> um, different, yeah, there we go. Um, different viewpoints. You might be really good at incorporating the ideas of the entire group. Um, and you may naturally kind of like 
take up this almost like leadership role because of this like again this like eclectic energy or draw toward an eclectic approach and then putting your north node in leo the reason why is because you might be the person to best lead this moving forward and this can look different in this life but this is just what i was picking up for this past life but i do feel like there's a lot here about creativity with the orange rose as well and something that's interesting is that in this deck um there's one other there's one other astrological sign card that has an orange flower and it's Taurus. So again, it's very Venus energy. So you may have important Taurus placements as well. Um, but this, again, this feels a lot like if this is about creativity. Um, and with all the stars here too, this is because this is part of your divinely guided path. Um, and so in this life, you're really being encouraged. And that doesn't mean you necessarily have to go be like a leader or have to put yourself in the spotlight, but this is encouraging you essentially in this lifetime to not let a good idea or a calling pass you by, right? Um, Cause again, Aquarian energy is also known for being very detached. So for, this is really calling you to not let, um, not let like a good thing pass you by, not let, um, you know this opportunity go by if there's somebody like there's a small community that really like needs leadership kind of roles or needs somebody to kind of um you know spearhead a movement you have the you have that x factor but you also have the past life experience that would make you a really like predispose you to being a good leader um and this is kind of encouraging you especially where leo is very um it's ruled by the heart chakra this is encouraging you to be a little bit more attached to something that you might you might really love right so you might really love this thing um but <clears throat> struggle to go after it or struggle to um yeah it's hard for me to describe kind of like struggle to to be like, I don't want to say more fixated on it, but this is, you know, where this is detachment, you might struggle to attach your, like, attach this thing to your identity, right? To see yourself as this person. And this is really calling you to try to, like, um, remain open to the possibility that this might be kind of your calling or what you're being drawn to do. Especially if you've had a lot of really negative experiences with leadership or with authority positions. Um, this is also really talking about how this wouldn't be an abuse of power right like by moving more toward your leo energy you're not going to run the risk of becoming like you know more of the shadow leo attributes of like too egotistical too egocentric or power hungry you have what it takes to balance that out and it's gonna it's gonna unfold differently for you than it might for some other people and this isn't like shade at leo or anything all signs have light and shadow energy and attributes um, and those are just kind of some of the shadowy elements of leo so i could see for some of you um really struggling to see authority figures or like power structures in a positive light um, and thus not want to take part in it but this is also kind of saying like you have this natural inclination this past life energy of wanting to um, like really check in with the group all the time and like, um, you know, really create a community that serves its constituents. There we go. Um, so yeah, let's pull you guys a past life card and let's dig a little bit deeper. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Sorry. They get excited. Let's we'll see what you guys got. You got monk or nun. Okay. Interesting. Let me just make sure there's no glare. So something else I'm getting too, because Aquarian energy is massively, um, you know, we have group oriented and we also have humanitarian. Aquarian energy is a lot about like, again, like uh, communal kind of energy um, and like that humanitarian energy really helping to serve others. So again, I feel like this is in this past life, you had a life of service. Um, and you had a life of, and that may also pertain to like the things that you created were of a particular kind of like background or, or theme or energy or caliber. And this was because of your moral and moral, spiritual, philosophical, and potentially religious belief systems. And so I feel like there is this like resistance toward, again, being in a position of power because it feels like it goes against what you know, and especially also too with communal living, like we were talking about, um, you know, you may have been a monk or a nun in this, like literally monk or a nun in this past life and lived communally with, you know, with your, your brethren and sistren. Um, and it, that may have influenced how you look at power structures, which, you know, again, 
to a certain extent, depending on the religious practice and where in the world, a lot of monks or nuns, there are hierarchies, there are higher, higher, um, like power structures within many spiritual and religious disciplines and practices. But this feels like you, you lived this life in a very communal, egalitarian, that's the word, egalitarian way, in that this concept of stepping out as a leader, um, almost feels like antithetical to everything that you know to be good and true at the soul. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna pull y'all a numerology guidance card so we can look at this a little bit closer. Sorry, it's really hard for me to shuffle on camera. I'm trying, trying really hard not to bump the lighting, the camera, or the microphone. It is a beautiful dance. Oh, it's this one. It's this one. Okay. So y'all have, oh, you guys got love. That makes sense too, because again, Leo would be your north node and that's very much about the heart chakra. Um, okay, so let me just see here. Something else that I'm kind of picking up on is, so there's like this negotiation. This is, you know, there are shared shadow elements between all oppositional signs on the wheel of the zodiac. And for Aquarius and Leo, it is about the ego and the self, but it's also about how they experience love. So Aquarius is known for this very, again, like, uh, like humanitarian, like love for humankind, but like this detached kind of energy where it's not really directed at any one particular person. They're kind of, this energy is known for being, like it says, the innovator and creating like a better, you know, better power structures, a better world for everybody. Whereas the opposite, Leo tends to be more heart centered and like more heart chakra focused and might be much more like they're known for being very effusive and very generous in love with the people in their lives. Um, so this again, I feel like is really calling you. You might have like experiences in this lifetime where um, you're very called to like you have like uh, interpersonal relationships where, you know, like um, I'm trying to think of a good example. You might have interpersonal relationships in this lifetime where the other person seems like maybe more attached or seems like, I don't want to say clingy, but like, um, like you may just have these people who are very, very loving and very attached to you. And this may be, even though you love them, this may be a challenge for you at times. So like maybe you like to do your own thing um, and people that you love have kind of talked to you about that or you'll be that person that like forgets to respond to friends and family and loved ones for a long period of time and people think you don't care and that's not it. It's just like you you have like you just have a different way of relating to people, right? Um and I feel like this is also um something else I'm picking up on because we have air energy and then your north node would be in fire is that I feel like you're used to showing people that you care through the ideas that you come up with, through the concepts that you discuss together, through what it is that you intellectually create and having your north node in Leo is really calling you to feel this like feel this passion and feel this love at the soul. Um, and I feel like where this is a little more generalized and unfocused and communal, I feel like with this love card coming out, um, this is really about your mindset and how you express yourself and communicate in one-on-one -on -one very close, loving, interpersonal connections. And that doesn't just have to be romantic love, but this is like, you know, really close family members, you know, best friends. This can talk about romantic partners. And I feel like um, because we have a lot of blue here and this is in this deck, there are cards like this where the Merkaba is the same color as the background. And there's other ones where it's different colors. And when it's the same, I kind of take this to be your internal frequency is in harmony with your external reality. Um, and because it's blue and that's very much like the throat chakra energy, this to me is talking about how part of the challenge of this life for you is going to really revolve around honestly expressing yourself emotionally with the people that you love um, and really expressing that love, communicating that love and thinking in those terms um, and really being like hyper focused on on like uh like your one-on-one -on -one relationships especially in those moments that feel challenging where you want to withdraw because with monk or nun coming out as well i kind of get this feeling that this group of like if you know this is your south node placements um 
there is this communal living, but there's also this like very, um, like this very like separate thing, right? I feel like this is kind of the energy of you do have this communal living. You all work together to create a better vision, a higher vision, a more spiritual vision. But ultimately at the end of the day, you're kind of more or less alone with your thoughts and you kind of have more opportunities to withdraw into meditation, contemplation, silence, prayer, etc. Um, instead of having these very intense one-on-one -on -one connections, um, in, in all of those moments. So I feel like there's this interesting juxtaposition of learning how to have those types of more intense, attached, one-on-one -on -one connections based around, again, all types of love, um, but based around like these very like, you know, intense interpersonal connections um, where you may not have had that as much in a past life. I hope that makes sense. I know that's a little bit confusing, but um, let's pull you guys some tarot and dig a little deeper. Um, I'm using the Herb Crafters Tarot, by the way. It is stunning. I highly recommend it. Um, also linked in, the, linked in the description box down below because I can't talk, apparently. All right, come on, card three. Oh, it's like this. Okay. So we have... The Seven of Cups. The um, Page of Pentacles. Sorry, I had a total brain fart for a second. And the Seven of Wands Reverse. Interesting. Okay. That's fascinating to me. Sorry, I'm trying to set it up right, but we do the best we can here. Okay. So, yes, again, um, something I'm seeing is that this past life they're talking about with the seven of cups this is normally a lot of the times about like um you know choice paralysis it's like analysis paralysis it's trying to figure out the best way to move forward in the situation because it's usually a man looking at seven cups and they all have different things in them and he's kind of just like clearly overwhelmed um but something that i was kind of feeling when i flipped this card over in this situation was um it was what's the phrase it's wide as an ocean deep as a puddle um, again, I feel like there is this, this kind of like detached energy where it's like, um, maybe you had a lot of people around you and you had a lot of like, this again is like humanitarian kind of like universal unconditional love energy, which I know is a little bit more of that kind of, um, like Piscean energy, but this feels like there was a lot of people around you, but there wasn't really this this like emotional like deep emotional connection because one of the oof, sorry that was my knuckles one of the things with the seven of cups is like you have multiple options in front of you um but they're all options that you you have like some type of emotional attachment to whether positive or negative but it's not like fully developed right that's part of the confusion because there's like you know you have you have seven different things in front of you all of which you have some you know a little bit of feelings about in any direction but you can't really see it clearly um and so what i feel like again is this is kind of like being surrounded by a lot of people but not having a lot of close interpersonal connection with many of them um and so it feels like um it feels like especially too with the with the page of pentacles it feels like you guys were able to build something all together but because it's only the page it was not as fully developed as it could have been and again this might be this energy of like decentralizing power structures um and this idea of communal living so i feel like it was a very simple life i feel like it was very fulfilling but i feel like it it didn't have that same type of emotional intent uh, att uh, emotional attachment or intensity and that's not a bad thing it's just like you know every lifetime we have different goals and again with your north node being in the opposite sign this is really calling you to kind of like incorporate that other energy so you may find in this life that you again struggle with really this detachment and i see this with the seven of wands reversed as well because the seven of wands upright is really about going after what you want and and like spirit backing you up in the process and having the upper hand um, but when it's reversed, it's kind of like being in flow, you know, letting it go, not really chasing it. Um, and so again, there's, I feel like the biggest thing that's coming through here is this detachment, um, which is not, again, not a bad thing, but to the, the extent where it's, 
it's worthwhile to be more attached and a lot of this having to do with leadership potential as well um i feel like you know once again you're able to build something and sustain something within the community that you were living in and there is like a spiritual element to it as well um but i do feel as if there is this detachment from the people involved so there is like this this shared spirituality but you didn't get to like really know people in like a real intimate one-on-one -on -one setting um and this might be impacting you in this life where again if you kind of like really struggle to take up leadership positions you really struggle um sometimes with like authentic self-expression in intense interpersonal and like intimate connections i could see that um, this can also really talk about having a lot of innovative, creative ideas, but not like being being a little too detached from pursuing them, which I could see with this monk or nun card as well. Um, is that just due to the circumstances of this past life, I feel like you had to kind of um, like put aside any sense of your own ego in order to be part of a collective. Uh, and that's not like a bad thing, but in this life you're being asked to kind of embrace the self a little bit more and to, what I'm hearing is to individualize a little bit more. So let's pull you guys some more tarot and look a little bit deeper. Oh. Yeah, okay. Actually, I'm gonna put that over here. Oop. I'm gonna take that one. Ah, these cards, they're jumping. Okay, so you had the world come out reversed, which I thought about putting that at the end, but I decided not to, and I felt like that's significant, and I'll explain more why after. You have the, <laughs> the Ten of Wands. and the Knight of Cups, exactly. Okay, so with the, the world coming out reverse, again, I thought about putting it over here, but I wanted to put it here. Um, this is really talking about this past life cycle needs to draw to a close, um, or not necessarily needs to draw to a close, it's really talking about how this isn't over yet, um, and it, it like, the, there are parts of this that need to be wrapped up in order to really pursue this north node energy so this is really recognizing that this cycle this cycle needs to develop further um, because it hasn't been wrapped up yet the soul lessons haven't been fully learned yet and i see this as well with the ten of wands um, all the tens in the tarot are about completion of a cycle and this is the end of a spiritual cycle and a spiritual cycle where it's become a burden for you right um the ones are our passion our creativity and you know kind of like that soul-based energy that spark and when we get to the ten of wands you know it's usually depicted as a man carrying ten wands and he's struggling to, to like hold them all up um, and this really talks about when your passions have kind of become a burden for you right um when like you know what you sue you it's essentially when you hold on to something because you you have such strong feelings about it um but it's to the point where you're willing to overlook all of the complications all of the difficulties that really are like weighing down the situation um so in this past life the way this may have played out is that you may have had a love connection um uh, you know again doesn't have to just be romantic but you may have had an interpersonal relationship that like was you were like so in love with them but with this ten of wands there was just so many like there are so many practical factors in the way um, and with the world coming out reverse too this could really kind of talk about the idea that this isn't really over yet this hasn't been completed you might be playing out the rest of this cycle in this lifetime with this person um, but this is kind of to me talking about like you know having this love go you know go poorly go not how you want it to and as a result having escaped into more of this like communal living and this may kind of have caused a little bit of this detachment um and with this being the ten of wands oh sorry my cat's sitting right next to me i didn't notice that um with this being the ten of wands this is really talking about this cycle wrapping itself up um and and the way like this is like this is the energy of like this isn't over yet but this part of this cycle has completed itself this part needs to end um but this like this connection itself this like sort of soul story arc isn't isn't over yet 
um, because then we have this Knight of Cups. This is uh, masculine water energy, so Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. And this is really talking about, um, you know, essentially kind of like what we were talking about just now, like really reconnecting because the, the Knight of, oops, sorry, I mean above the camera, the Knight of Cups, he like, he loves love. Um, he's very comfortable with his emotions. He's very comfortable taking action on his emotions. He's very comfortable coming forward with an offer of love. Um, like that's, that's kind of, that's the Knight of Cups. That's what he does. Um, and this is really talking to me about this, this, like there are going to be some in, more intense interpersonal connections in your life in this life and I feel like this is in order to help break the little bit of this detached energy but also to prepare you for this person coming back around so you guys can finish up this cycle um, and you guys can can kind of have the relationship you didn't get the chance to have in a past life um, so there's just this massive emphasis toward being very attached like very um, connected in the heart space and being very connected to your feelings and not being afraid to take action on those feelings. So I'm going to pull y'all a couple cards of advice and then I'll let y'all go for the day. Like I say it like you're in school and I'll let you go. Okay so your advice cards are the six of wands reversed. Interesting this was at the bottom of the deck when I was shuffling for you guys earlier and the nine of cups reverse oh yeah okay I feel like this is again really talking about this is a, a situation or a person where in the past there was there was you know perceived failure it's like your wishes were totally dashed um, and again with the six candles here the six wands I feel like this is something where maybe you had like a false start with this person multiple times we have six here and we have six here um so this is definitely about interpersonal connections but this is like maybe you tried multiple times you tried in multiple ways i feel like with all the orange red and yellow and also the orange flower here there was a lot of divine feminine energy there was a lot of like creative energy there's a lot of passion here um, and then it didn't really work out and I feel like this is kind of where this detachment may have taken place where this may have come in because I feel like once with the nine of cups reversed once this was like dashed for you um, once this didn't really come to fruition I feel like that was kind of your breaking point um, but with these coming out I kind of want to pull you one more advice card just because I'm curious um, so let's see what we can get because I want to leave you guys with something a little more empowering okay and we have yay okay cool all right so this would be the um the knight of swords yeah so in this situation what i'm really seeing is that even though this didn't work out in the past and you may have experiences in this life again very intense interpersonal connections this is really asking you to try as much as possible to be open to the lessons and move forward with like a learning mindset especially when you get overwhelmed emotionally or you feel like um like if you feel like maybe too emotionally overstimulated this is asking you to have some type of like mental um like like mental kind of like stimulation to help balance that out so maybe be like involved in learning new things or teaching things um this also could be really good to have like a creative outlet and don't be afraid to think outside the box um but this is also really saying like don't be afraid you have two knights here and it's the the knight of cups and the knight of swords so this is the the head and the heart and this is saying don't be afraid to express yourself don't be afraid to move forward with your ideas um and I don't know why this isn't really like a knight of swords thing but what I'm really getting is like don't be afraid to share your growth with other people right don't be afraid to grow and to share to share that kind of like growth and connections with others um because this kind of situation is is from this past life and even if you've had a lot of struggles and relationships in this life um, this doesn't mean that a you're not meant for connections B it doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong um, and C it's it's all part of your growth and part of your learning um, so really moving toward more of your Leo energy is going to be 
really, really beneficial. And I, I mentioned this prior, but with Leo ruling the fifth house, not only does this talk about creative endeavors, but this also really talks about, um, the fifth house can talk about romance as well. So particularly in terms of creativity, um, like I said, communal living and um, potentially with like romance, this is just really about being very grounded in one-on-one -on -one connections and not fearing the emotional intimacy that can come up in one-on-one -on -one scenarios. So. I hope this has been helpful. I'm wishing y'all the best and the most beautiful things that life has to offer. Take care, love bugs. Bye.